I'd like to explain how to calculate the force on a surface in a flow from the velocity field. We calculate forces in fluids from expressions for stress. So stress is force per unit area. So if the stress on a surface is uniform across the surface, we can multiply this by area and we end up with the force. So force equals stress times area. Now what we said there was that the stress is uniform. Uniform means that the stress does not vary in position across the surface. Now we could just as well imagine that we're talking about a surface and the stress is different at different points along the surface. This happens quite often in fluid mechanics. So if we have a force and the, surface, the stress on the surface is varying with position, we need to divide the surface into small pieces. And for each of these little pieces, say A1, A2, A3, all the way across, we need to calculate the stress and multiply it by the area. So we need the stress at position A1 times the area A1, and we need to add the stress at square A2 times A2, etc., and add them all up to get the force on the total surface. So we could think of this as a sum in the case of our nine boxes of I equals one to nine of stress at the ith surface, piece of surface, times that same surface area gives me the total force. If I have an irregular, irregularly shaped surface, or one that's in, say, cylindrical coordinates, the system is the same. I need to divide it up into little pieces, little, little pieces I'll call dA, and I need to add up the stress, evaluate it at those little pieces of surface, and across this total surface A, and that gives me the total force. So the total force on a surface A is equal to the stress function, which varies with position, evaluated at that surface A, um, integrated over the entire surface. We can get some experience with this calculation by considering the flow down an inclined plane that we have considered before. So the flow down an inclined plane is here. And the surface we might want to calculate the force on is the force of the inclined surface. So in order to calculate this, we need the stress as a function of position across the surface and then we'll integrate it across our surface, and in our case, the surface we're going to integrate across is the surface area of this plate, and that surface area is just a big square, rectangular square of surface that has a certain length in the z direction, okay, and it has a certain width in the y direction. So the integration over this surface is an integration over z and y, not x. Uh, x is this thickness direction, but we want this flat plate, and it's the y direction that gives us the surface of this plate. So now we need 
to get the total force, we need the integral of the stress at the plate surface, uh, dy dz, where the y goes from 0 to w and the z goes from 0 to l. So the problem now becomes, what is this quantity, the stress? And this is where our friend, the stress components, comes in. We learned that from Newton's law of viscosity, we could write tau equals minus mu dv d some variable, where the tau has some subscripts and so does the v, and then there's a variable here. And let's say for the flow in the z direction that varies in the x would be the case of our inclined plane. This would be uh, tau xz. So this tau xz refers to flux of z momentum in the x direction. It can also mean the stress on the X surface in the Z direction. So we need this component, tau XZ, the stress on an X surface in the Z direction in order to calculate the, um, the stress we're looking for. The stress on an X surface in the Z direction. So there is a, a, a force in the Z direction and it's the stress on an X surface. Now there are some subtleties of the signs of the stress and of the surface because the definition of this surface, uh, X surface, an X surface is a surface whose unit normal is the unit vector in the x direction, which I'll call ex. So an x surface is a surface whose unit normal is ex. If we look at our problem, uh, ex would be in the x direction like this. And that's not the unit normal of our surface here. Our surface has a unit normal of minus EX. It's in the opposite direction to which X increases. So there are some subtleties and I'll have to deal with that in another video. But generally, we're now looking at the force on this surface will be calculated from the integral of 0 to L, the integral from 0 to W of tau xz dy dz uh, with tau xz given by Newton's law of viscosity. With Newton's law of viscosity, we then put in the velocity uh, solution that we got when we solved the flow down an incline and then we can carry out the integration.